What's up guys, welcome to Vintage Genetics, where it is all about classic bodybuilding. And today you will see part of my diet. Uh, the only thing I didn't include is the breakfast, I believe, and maybe one more meal uh, before bed. But mostly you see what I eat during a low-carb day. And today, that you are about to see, was my second low-carb day in a row. But you definitely don't have to suffer while doing a contest diet, even if it's low-carb. No need to suffer at all. I will do. I will be doing a uh, several dedicated cooking videos to make your food taste very good, especially with rice, with fish. How to use vegetables, how to use spices, because that's what I love to do. I love to cook. I love to make it taste good, and I've always had good results on stage, even with my food being very tasty. So I will be showing you that for sure in later videos. But in this video, you will see what I like to eat during my contest prep. And um, you will also see a nice chest workout, uh, keeping it to the basics, but very hardcore, old school, making sure every rep counts and getting a nice pump. And of course, giving you every single tip I can think of while doing the exercises. So I want you to enjoy the video and let's start it. All right, guys, this is my second meal of the day. It's a low carb day today. This is sauerkraut. This is codfish. These are uh, greeny leafy vegetables, green leafy vegetables, baby spinach, a lot of different vegetables as well, some paprika, some celery, and some different um, greens as you can see right here, some different lettuces, and a little bit of um, potatoes for the carbs. There's 30 grams of carbs in here, 65 grams of protein, there's also some tuna beneath. So this is a very nice second meal of the day on this low carb day. I'll be having be having about six or seven meals today um there's a little bit of soy sauce in the codfish to make it taste nicely and yeah i'm going to enjoy this meal for sure All right this will be my pre-workout meal i actually put 400 grams of broccoli i mean cauliflower rice in here which you can barely see some um turmeric spice right there inside some coconut oil and 250 grams of cooked was my rice but I'll actually split this meal up in two I'm actually also cooking some celery away and I'll add this to the meal as well and let me show you in here there's some wild salmon which you will take about 300 grams of so you will see at the end of this preparation the awesomeness of this meal and trust me guys if you think on a low carb day you cannot have a volume in your meals this even split in half is still a lot of volume and that's not even all the vegetables we're going to use we add the celery we add the bell pepper we add the salmon it's going to be amazing and it's very low carb for sure so now i'm about to prepare the fish in here and i'm going to show you exactly how i do that a lot of people ask me how do you make your fish tasty and i'll add this soy sauce and as you can see it's 70 calories per 100 milliliters now this is 150 milliliters in total, so I'm just going to add a little bit in there. That's all you need. And it won't even be absorbed probably, you know, one third will be absorbed of this, so that's probably, you know, two to three to four calories. But we'll see exactly what the end result will be. So here's a wild salmon. Below it you can see still the soy sauce, it's just a little bit. You will see at the end that there will be a lot left under the pan. It's just to make it soak up the flavor. And do not worry about the salt because I'm about to work out and I'll be sweating out more salt than there is in here, trust me. So what you want to do is put it on a low heat like that. Put the lid on it. As you can see the heat is very low. Let's bump it up just a little bit like that. And then that will be cooked in about a few minutes. This is already done. This is pretty much done as well. So once that's done, it's a done deal and you will see the end result. And by the way, I'm wearing the new bamboo shirt. Pretty awesome with a reflective sign, a reflective logo, the official vintage genetics logo. Fits very well, but anyway guys, I'm gonna work out my chest and you will see the footage of that as well I have to send pictures to my coach perhaps you will see those as well depending on if I should already show my current shape as it is right now because things are going quite fast for the Chicago Perot which I'm very excited for so it's meals like this that I eat in my prep to the competition so I'm very excited so this is the end result I already split up the, uh, the rice and the cauliflower rice in a separate one for post-workout 
And here the other half is with the celery, and the bell pepper toasted off in this pan. And there we have the salmon and nice and marinated. Have to check the middle one to see if it's good. And I'm going to combine this into a delicious meal. So over here is the final meal. You can see the salmon on top. It may not look the most of tastiest meal, but trust me, it definitely tastes very good. The rice and the other stuff is below there, right here. It's a lot of volume, and there's only 35 grams of carbs in this entire meal. Around 65 grams of protein, and around 10 to 12 grams of fat. So that's perfect for a pre-workout meal. Working on some videos for you guys. Wanted to post a lot more, and I'll see you at the workout. All right, guys, let's jump right into this chest workout. I felt great today. I had an amazing workout, really had a nice chest workout. We kept it old school with mostly old school exercises like we used to do at Vintage Genetics because I love doing these exercises as it has given me the physique I have today. And this is the first time in a long time that I've been wearing a hoodie during my training especially the you know at least the first few exercises and it just gives off a different feeling it really is nice to really warm up the body quicker but of course we already did a few warm-up sets to warm up the shoulders to warm up the chest to make sure there's blood in there before we go heavy and as you see i'm wearing the new team vintage genetics hoodie limited edition also available in black because a lot of people requested this hoodie just to be part of team vintage genetics it's kind of been an iconic hoodie since i've been wearing it in every single competition since 2017 even before that uh, every time i went to the contest mode i was wearing it getting real serious so everybody who already bought one thank you so much for the support for supporting vintage genetics but anyway after having done a couple of bench press sets we move on to the heavier sets and i was very happy that i was able to hit 10 reps on this 150 kilogram bench press normally it was 140 gra uh, kilograms but i really felt strong today had a really nice sleep and that really made me do 10 reps of this weight even though the last set i mean the last rep was quite difficult even though it's my second low day i still felt great and that's what it's all about during the workout after that i did one more heavier set with 160 kilograms and then we went over to the incline bench press and uh, this is a very nice exercise that I haven't shown you guys for quite a while on the channel. I've been doing incline dumbbell press or incline Smith machine bench presses or an incline machine press. But it's been a while since I've done the free weight incline bench press, which in my opinion, if you do it correctly, is one of my favorite upper chest builders there are but you have to do it with correct form so you don't have to go heavy because i used to watch and i still of course do arnold's bodybuilding clips and how he performed certain exercises and when i saw him perform the incline bench press first of all i saw that his weight that he was using wasn't that heavy and the form that he was using is very different from basically anyone i've ever seen so when i tried it myself i immediately understood why he did it that way so what i'm doing and what he did is let the bar drop to your upper chest right below your chin so let it drop as high as possible without trying to flare out your elbows protect your shoulders but really feel that stretch in the upper chest it really feels that much different compared to the regular exercise execution so if you try that like this you will notice a better pump and a better mind muscle connection in that part of the chest trust me and try it out and then it's time for the pec deck flies which again is an amazing exercise because both the stretch and the contraction are both present here now usually i like to do the dumbbell flies for example or the cable flies but this exercise is very good for the reason that if you already did two bench press exercises which are mostly all about the stretch because you cannot fully contract you should do at least one exercise in the workout that 
allows you to fully contract the chest as well. If you do dumbbell flies, you can contract the chest, but it's not because of the weight, but because of your own force. And now you have to contract it to finish the range of motion. And with dumbbells, you don't have to contract it to finish the range of motion, at least not as hard. And I went pretty heavy with this right off the bat. And of course, also wearing the new color of the classic sleeveless shirts, diamond green. So if you want to stay golden, which is what I'm doing, you should wear one of those for sure. And I'm also wearing new shorts, which will be released very quickly. And the last set of these pack deck flies, after having done three quite heavy ones of about 12 reps on average, I like to do 21s because you don't want to really go too heavy on, on, on flies because it's dangerous for the shoulders and dangerous even for the biceps because you use those as well to stabilize your arm, stabilize everything. You might want to consider doing a little higher volume set to finish it off with uh, to really get a nice pump to make the next exercise even more beneficial. Because if you stretch out a chest or a muscle that is more pumped up, it will give you an even greater response. So what I'm doing here is 21s, 7 short reps at the contraction part, 7 short reps at the stretch part, and 7 complete reps. But then instead of 7 complete reps, I simply went uh, with whole reps until failure. So as I mentioned, when you have a great pump in the chest, any exercise you do afterwards that stretches the chest will have a greater benefit for growth. And the reasoning for that is, as I always already said, is that when you stretch a chest that is more pumped up, the stretch will be more predominant because you, will, you can literally feel it, especially if you have a good mind-muscle connection. You can feel that incredible stretch in the chest, which I'm feeling right now. And I also want you to watch the way that I move my upper body during this exercise. So when I'm pressing down, I'm actually moving my upper body backwards just a little bit to be able to fully contract the chest. And when I'm stretching, I'm moving my upper body forwards just a little bit to exaggerate the stretch. And that is one way to really exaggerate the range of motion of the chest muscle itself because the greater the range of motion the more muscle fibers will be triggered to grow and as we all know some exercises on machines just don't go heavy enough so 80 kilograms is the heaviest i can go on this machine with two arms and i was able to hit 12 to 15 reps with it so if you're still not entirely fatigued and you're able to do even a heavier set, you might want to try a unilateral set afterwards. And then all of a sudden the weight becomes twice as heavy. So again, I chose 40 kilograms because it is more, it's actually more than twice as hard if you go unilaterally. So it really felt very heavy and I really went to failure this time. And it actually also allows you to stretch out the chest even further, hit it from a slightly different angle. Angle and it's just an amazing way to finish off the chest after having done some dips. So try it out if you can, doing it this way and you'll feel the incredible difference and increase the balance in between both pectoral muscles. Okay guys, and now you see something that I haven't shown you quite a lot. Um, if you look throughout this video, especially during the later exercises that you're about to see, you might see, especially now that I'm getting quite lean for the show, that my triceps have improved at least a little bit. Even I can see it. And one of the reasons for that is that I found out that when I'm, whenever I'm doing a heavy exercise for triceps, for example a skull crusher or this exercise right here, that builds the long head or the medial head, my, my elbows are being pushed apart too far and not allowing me to fully stretch or contract those parts of the triceps. So what I had to force myself to do is get something to keep my arms closer together to force myself to get a better stretch and contraction in the triceps. And trust me, 
Right now I'm feeling muscle ache in the triceps that I haven't felt in literally years. Because now I'm finally able to hit my triceps with an angle that I really do feel. I've always had difficulty feeling my triceps during any of these exercises like this, but right now I feel it so much that I finally found a good solution to really bring my triceps up even just a little bit. Now here you can see that the improvements in the triceps are definitely there. Um, especially just in the medial head, pushing the long head and the small head apart a little bit. So the overall mass, the overall thickness in my triceps has definitely improved. And um, especially the long head and the medial head, I would say, has improved. You can see it from this angle a little bit better. And I'm very happy that I finally found a small tool to help me build up my triceps just a little more. So it's just little details sometimes that can bring you to a next level, but only if you do it consistently. Alrighty, guys, I just got home from the workout. And it was an amazing workout for sure. Had a nice pump in the chest felt great felt pretty strong and now it's time for the post workout meal so let's check it out so this right here is the post workout meal you can see 350 grams of codfish marinated lightly in soy sauce just like the wild salmon before you've got some celery to prevent or to lessen water retention which if you do it consistently you will notice the difference and what we also have is the mix of cauliflower and rice that we had previously that I cut in half. So 125 grams of cauliflower, I mean 200 grams of cauliflower rice and 125 grams of brown basmati rice for the extra fiber. Remember, if you're eating a lot of protein, you need the fiber to prevent the bloating from happening. Because fibers absorb the gases that cause the bloating. There's also some bell peppers and some cannellini uh, beans for the extra carbs, a little bit of protein, and again, the extra fiber. Some turmeric through this, some black pepper, some salt, so let's enjoy this meal. Alright guys, that was the video of today. I will be uploading a lot more videos for sure. And I want to thank you for watching and do not forget to stay.